Is it on? Is it on, honey? Is this bitch recording? Mm -hmm. What's up, YouTube land, Twitter land, Instagram land, Snapchat, Grinder, Scruff, BGC, Jack, Facebook, Periscope, and last but not least, every single one of my bitches, Christian Mingo, and the last all across the land. This is your girl, T.S. Madison. I'm coming to you loud, live, and always, and forever, in color, from our brand new series, Cracking the Cold Cases, honey. Yes. And on tonight's Cracking the Cold Cases, we have our very special guest judge tonight. It's none other than VH1's Flavor of Love. Yeah, boy. Delicious. Yeah. Cracking the Cold Cases, I'm cracking these shrimps. I see you over there cracking the shrimps. <laughs> First of all, I want to say thank you so much for coming and doing thank the show you. with me. Thank you are so beautiful in person. Well, not that you're not beautiful. You were beautiful on, on TV looking thank at you and then all this body. And then to see it in person come through like, ow, ow, <laughs> ow. Thank you, baby. We're sitting here having a good dinner from our show sponsor tonight, The One Seafood. She sponsored our food. She wanted to make sure that you had a good plate. And this taste this is, is very so seasoned, delicious. very good. And we're about to get into, we're going to crack these crabs, and then we're going to crack into some of these cold cases. Mm -hmm. I'm sleeping alone tonight. So oh, I'm listen, eat it, 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 listen. You say you're going to sleep well? I'm sleeping alone, so I'm going to eat the eggs. Okay. That should have been one of the questions, because does, does eggs just make you poop? Yes. <laughs> you know, but does a lady like yourself poop, or do you fart? No, I probably pass gas. <laughs> <laughs> I just lift it up a little bit. Oh, I just. And I keep my spray on my nightstand. Oh. Uh, because I don't want to smell myself. Right. Let alone somebody else smell me. Oh. Well, I got to start using that if that's what it's like good it is to be ladylike. Yes. Yeah, get you your little spray. You pass gas. You don't fart or poop. <laughs> no. I'm past those days with my old ass. Uh, mm -hmm. You ain't old. I'm 41. Well, I'm 42. I mean, I'm good to the moon. Yes. Let me tell you. I just turned 42 October the 22nd. Yes, you did. Happy belated, by the way. But, Thank you. I should have had you come dance at the party. Oh, yes. I would have twerked it out. <laughs> I don't know how good I would have been, but I would have done it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, let's jump right on into this because okay. there are people out there that want to crack some of this stuff. They, they, they've been watching you. You've got, you got millions of fans mm. and people that adore you, men and women alike. Thank you. And they got these questions. So here oh, we go. Shoot. Let's crack one of the cold cases. Okay. Even though Flavor of Love Season 2 aired over 10 years ago. Damn, it's been 10 years. Yeah, 2006. It is still an iconic moment in reality TV that is still revered. Yes. What exclusive behind-the-scenes tea can you spill about what happened while filming? Do you still talk to Flav? Do you still have a relationship with any of the girls? Yes. Right. Okay. So what I can spill is you saw that Flav moved on after I won Season 2. He moved on and did a season three where, where thing one or two was thing one and thing two. One of those young ladies won, but at the reunion, we saw that he ended up with Karma, his son's mother. Well, I'll spill the tea. During reality taping, although everything was real in our show, they don't give us a script. They don't tell us what to do. They don't motivate anything. You can still see producers on the set, you know, because they have cameras and they have the mics and all that kind of stuff. So you can see people minimally. Karma's mom was there the whole time. She was there the whole time. So when, when he broke up with me and we later saw her come on to the reunion of season three, all of us did the... <gasps> that was one of the ladies that we thought was... A producer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, and it was actually his girl. So I guess she was one of those... Down for it, or you call it what your bottom bitch? Bot, bat, uh, bottom bitch, your toes like, down. Go get your money. You know, you know what I'm saying. Go ahead and you know do what you got to do with all these women. At the end of the day, I'm gonna still be here, literally. Well, yeah, she was around the whole time. Oof. Yeah. Did it make you feel some kind of way? Did it like later on, or did you feel like I felt a pawn? better? Like when he. Well, no, because you know what? I love Flav. That's like still my people. I still talk to Flav. You know, you know, New York tells me to say that. You know, mm -hmm. New York is my be. That's my girl. Now, when you ask me that, that's another answer to the question. Me and New York, who people thought we were enemies. No, we were competing on the show. 
The one who I probably wasn't most favorable of was crazy, but New York, she was mad entertaining. We're actually really cool now. Yeah, and you know that's my girl. You know that's, that's my girl. Baby. That's yes. my baby right there. All right, so I'm going to move on to the second question that we have here. Mm -hmm. This might be a little dirty. Okay. Now, New York has spoken candidly about Flavor Flay's large male appendage. I've never seen it. On my kids' life, God strike them down. They're not here, so I don't know where they are. God would have to be in control of their safety. He can strike them now. He don't know if I'm London or Luther in my draws, and I've never seen his man parts. Ever. Ever. Never. And he's never even tried to, like... I tried to get with him in, in Houston when we were supposed to be a couple. You said you tried. Mm -hmm. So you did try. I did. I, I thought he was my boyfriend. What was it about... That man that Flav has his own style. Everybody sees me and they're like, oh, does he always wear clocks and wear pink? No, you bring what you bring for your brand. So sometimes you have to, you know, be extra for the purposes of work. But outside of that, it's the swag. First of all, I like men from New York. Mm -hmm. Hey, boo, my boo is from New York. <laughs> <laughs> so I do, I have a thing for men from New York. They have a different type of swag. Um... And then Flav had them stores. You know, he come from Public Enemy. Public Enemy is like... He's iconic. He's iconic and he's like royal. Then he smoke weed. So it's something about when a man smoke, got some stories for you. You like a hood and nigga. And they from New York, yeah. Like a know. hood nigga. You like a hood New York nigga. Yeah. Uh -huh. And he good to you. He kind of smooth. And he put me on my... You know, I created my brand, but it was because I was on his platform. Mm. So... I've always had a thing for him. So you're forever grateful to him. I am definitely forever And grateful. they never touched a knee. No, but that doesn't mean I wouldn't have. It just didn't happen. No. Well, thank you for being honest. Thank you. Now, many speculate how you have maintained your lifestyle for so many years. Do they? What can you divulge <laughs> about your bagging claiming uh -huh. skills? Well, I work, and I work very hard. I'm an ambassador. I was a radio personality for over four years. I host parties across the country like every weekend for yeah. the past 13 years, minus the pregnancy, and I stopped that once I was six months. Mm. I went back to working once she turned six months. So I'm from Detroit. I'm a natural born hustler, and I've never been afraid of working. And I've never asked nor had a man do things for me. Uh, so basically what thing. people were trying to insinuate was that you were tricking out. No, I don't. It ain't tricking if you got it. Eh. If I was with someone and they had it and they took care of it, then that was their business. Shabba da tasha! <laughs> da da bo Girl, that made me speak in, in, in tongues and it ain't never learned. It ain't tricking if you got it, yeah. bitch. It ain't tricking if you got it. Now, listen, I really love the way that you're candid with these questions because, you know, some people probably would have squirmed and... You know, like, oh, I don't want to ask it. Because, you know, no. I'm glad that you're very open and honest I'd about it. I'd rather tell my own story. There's somebody, somebody else, else tell it. That's right. And they tell it wrong. That's right. <laughs> now, why haven't we seen you on our TVs? Like, why don't you have... Since 2006? 13 years? Yeah. Well, I think um, it's almost like a lot of people say Michael Jordan, when he came from basketball and decided to go play baseball, it was like taking your win and doing something wrong with it. So I did well with the flavor of love. I want to make sure when I go back into TV that it makes sense for me. I don't want to just jump into television because everybody else is doing it. It has to fit. Like I really wanted to do Charm School when all of the girls from Flavor of Love were able to do it right after. And the producers of Flavor of Love was like, Delicious, if you were charmless, you would fit the bill and we would have possibly cast you. But you had charm, so you don't fit on that. So when it doesn't fit, then... I thank God for it. I have done interviews for some of the popular shows that you watch on TV today. And when it doesn't go well, I take it as a blessing. Some things, you know, that you think are to your detriment or to your benefit. Yes. Yes. So, I, I, yes. Yeah. And then when I watch that season, I'll be like, oh, I'm so glad I wasn't a part of that. Yes, because I'd have been fighting and I'd doing have, all this stuff. Yeah. yeah and or, that's not what you wanted your brand no, to be. No, not at all. And I enjoy watching it. That don't mean that I have to be a part of it. And so I was lucky enough or blessed enough that I've been relevant and more relevant than some people that you see on TV every yes. day. And yes, I'm you have. still getting booked every weekend, so I'm good. Yes, that is a true story. Yeah. All right. <laughs> now, we did see you in a closing scene on Love and Hip Hop Atlanta with Stevie J years ago. Mm -hmm. What is the background story on that situation? Stevie and I were friends. You know how you meet people like how you and I met. Mm -hmm. When you become a part of the circuit, 
you you meet people. Yes. Or whatever. So Stevie and I met and we became cool. Stevie has a very charismatic and contagious personality. So I don't know if you've ever met him before. No, I haven't, but he's he is I have not met him personally. Mm -hmm. But he has said nice things about me yeah. in conversation that got that came back to me. Yes. I was like, oh, and that, okay. And I believe that because that's how Stevie is. Yeah. Stevie never meets a stranger. And he's very um, charismatic, like I said, and he's personable. So when we met, I thought maybe we had met prior. Because it was like he had already known me. Now, come on, Delicious. You know you found it in a muffin. I love you. And that's a man. Yeah. I'm, it is a man. And he so, was with Jocelyn. Well, shit. You think it's a man with another woman? No, literally. He was physically with her when I met him. You don't think Jocelyn thought she was fine as fuck, too? Well, she's fine as fuck, too, so I don't know. Oh! But they didn't come on to me. All right. So the next time when I ran into him, whatever, he was like, yo, what's up? So when he was going through it on that season that I ended up on the show, he hit me up. I had commented in his comments, and he hit me back in my DM and was like, yo, you understand it. I was like, of course I understand. If you're going through something, call me. And so he had already had my information. We connected. Next thing you know, I was in Atlanta. And so I was out there on a visit, and a visit became television. Oh. Yeah. So. Well, uh, Laz Alonzo. Mm hmm <laughs> <laughs> Oliver didn't tell me about that. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Mm. I like that answer. Do, do we, should we elaborate more, or was that a good enough answer? No, there's nothing there. Oh. <laughs> Where's Khalifa? Yes, that's the formal uh, friend of mine. Oh, you know I'm good friends with his mother. Oh yeah, so am I. I love her to death. Let me tell Talk you something. Talk about another personable person. Yes, yes. That's girl, my she bitch. came she out. Laugh too. I worked. I had a. I, I did an event in Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. and she came out to the event. She was like, she's been a fan of mine for a long time. And she will tell you, and she keeps it real. Yes, mm -hmm. she says I love you. She said, girl, you was on there talking some crazy shit on on the show. I was falling out. She yeah. says I love. I love, because you know, the for, the way the show was. Don't she make you feel good? She does. She's a woman's woman, so I like that about her. So she will come up to you and approach you and, and make you feel warm and comfortable. And the minute that you find out that it's his mom, well, I knew because I dated him, but still, the minute that you find out his mom, the humbleness is just like... I mean, she came yeah. out to the show, she was like, Madison, if you need me to take you out while you're here, and I was only Aww. in Pittsburgh for that night. And she's like, if you need me to take you out of Pittsburgh, you want, anytime you come and you want to hang out mm -hmm. with me, you just call me. I got this woman's number in the phone. And and guess what? He's the same way. I, I've never met him. Wiz is the same way. But you know what makes me mad? Delicious. Mm -hmm. I, I, maybe I should make this personal. Okay. What makes me mad is when people try to use the term clout chasing with me. What? Okay. Like I'm not a star myself. Yes, you are. Right. You know, and it's just like you try to, you, so people that, you're a star. I don't give a fuck if you was on TV 10 years ago, 10 I days. I am a day. part of black you, entertainment me, television. Are, yes. I'm a part of that history. You are a part of history. That. You are a star. <laughs> yeah. And we see each other, you know. Yeah. I might be an internet star, whatever, but I don't been on TV and stuff like that. Baby, and hopefully one day, hopefully one day, I may come forth. That's right. But I ain't never told nobody really that I'm friends with Wiz Khalifa, Mama. You know what I'm saying? And and, and, and let's say if I was in the room, oh, she clout, she's a clout chaser, like. That's okay. You have the club that you can chase. You yeah. don't even have to chase it. It's with you. It always it's not yeah. even. And so when they say that about me, I'll say no. I don't have to chase it for you to mention it. In my name, in my conversation, it's there already. Yeah. It's the clout that you wish you had. Hey, that's it. So yeah. that's how I need it's to okay. handle that. That's right. Because the woman made me feel like I, I was I was really humble because mm -hmm. your son is a big star. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you came out here to see me at this event. She mm -hmm. came. She paid her money to come see me. Beautiful people. And she hung out with me. Yeah. And then told me, I'm with Khalifa's mom. Isn't that something? Yeah, that's how she is. That's that's how she is. She's very sweet. She's I, the same way. I love her. Like, it was, it was. we had a good time. We hanged for majority of the day. We had yeah. a really good time. We, we, we even called each other over the phone. Like, that day. Yeah. And it was like, wow, she she was such cool people. She said, you know, Wiz and I don't be laughing at the damn sh at the show. And she's not lying. I'm telling you, she's good people, and he's just the same. Yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> now, many speculated. Mm -hmm. Many have speculated about your beauty and body, uh -huh. the secrets, plastic surgery. Uh -huh. You know, what are actually rumors, and what is actually true? Okay, so I, I, these are not mine. So you, you have, so you've had an augmentation. Yeah, but I've always I'm open about mine, so I don't know why they're speculating. I think the biggest speculation is about my nose, 
but you saw me walk into your house before I got my beat. Yeah. Shout out to your glam squad. Yes. So awesome glam. sauce. Yeah. Yes. Um, but I didn't get my nose job because... I can. I have terrible keloid skin, mm -hmm. and if I was to cut it, I'm afraid that the scarring that you see here, the scarring that you see, I don't know if you can see it through my dress. Girl, no. But that was not okay. So I had uh, a tummy tuck. Mm -hmm. My tummy tuck was down here. Everybody normally get their uh, their tummy tuck and their belly button ends up moving. My belly button not only did mine have to be reconstructed, it is now a permanent scar. And then when I got the tattoo over it, my tattoo has the biggest scar. scar. Yeah, so I would never touch my face because even when I got my rose on my hand, you could see a keloid yeah, as look, well. Yeah, look, I got a little mud on too. Yeah, see, and that's what I'm saying. My body, so we're yeah, the I same. Have keloid. I have keloid skin Baby, too. I, so yeah. I don't like to have to, you know, like beat people over the head with it. But I have no problem with telling you about my tummy tuck. Or my breasts. Why would I have a problem with telling you about my nose? Yeah. But no, I've said it for the longest time. I know how to do my face. I know how to beat my face. Even today when your makeup artist was doing me, I asked her a secret about the under eye. I have no problem finding out. And she contoured my nose like Michael Jackson yeah. immediately. Yeah. You look good. Like you, and, and you don't need a nose job. And that was what really offended me because I was like, I never really knew that I needed it that bad. You don't need you a know? nose job. So. Like you came here. Like, like it's one thing to Thank see you, somebody baby. on TV and like on video and stuff like that. And you came here, I was like, this girl is sick. Uh, I was, I was saying, like all of us in here are either like trans that. or we gay or we we Me straight too. women, <laughs> and we got one straight guy that works here, and 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 he was like, oh my god, he came upstairs, he was like, oh my god, she's beautiful, you know. Well, okay, and <laughs> we were just we were, we were going up, and, and you know, well, you I, know how people can be ugly and judgmental. Like, for no reason. Sometimes you go wake up in the morning, they be like, oh, this bitch didn't rose. So, you know what I'm saying? And just find a reason. And when I got on TV, it was the, the yeah, worst I, I feeling ever. That, that TV shit makes people really envious and jealous. Yeah, that's so crazy. And they, they, take, the way, they take away the human from, from, yeah. from you. Because we can't be that. Yeah, we can't be human no more. We're things yeah, now. Yeah, we're bambots. Yeah, this is crazy. Yeah. So, are you currently dating? I am. His name is Raymond Santana. He's from the Exonerated Five. I'm really into him. I enjoy, first of all, watching When They See Us on Netflix. And um, so I took to the story. It's so weird because watching that show, I thought oh. of them as my brothers. You know, have you seen the show? I have. So then you instantly, like, wrap your arms around them from your, you yes. know, your living room couch. And they became your brothers. Yes. So um, we were actually out at a mutual friend's birthday dinner. And I was with my mom. And so one of our mutual friends said, Santana, Raymond Santana wants to meet you. I looked around and said, want to meet me? I want to meet him. I right. want to hug him. Right. I'm like, that's my brother. And he wasn't taken by me embracing him like that because he's used to that. Because they get that reaction from people. So when when he came over, though, I felt bedroomized instead of him like saying, yeah, sister, you know, like. <laughs> he was like, <laughs> Listen, but you fine though. I, I, I can't. I'm not gonna keep. I might. I might. I might keep doing it. I might keep stroking your ego. But you fine. It's like you, you, you see this on TV. This is his first time seeing you in person, right? Yeah. So he's like probably like we were here. Like, oh, that's Baby, a bad motherfucker. You. He was like, "How you doing?" I was like, "Oh my goodness, it's such a pleasure." It was. You know, you you get that moment where it's not even a starstruck because you want to embrace them. So I was happy to, you know, hug him and tell him. And my mom was too. And then he started liking all my pictures after that. And so I went on ahead. I'm a slider. So I slid in the DM. <laughs> Wait a minute. Tell me what that means, a slider. What's I that? I was sliding your DM if I'm interested. Life is short. I get down to it. So <laughs> I said, I noticed that you keep liking my pictures. You know, we should probably get to know each other yeah. a little bit better. I live in Atlanta and I hear you do too. So I don't want to interview you, but I would love to talk to you. And he was like, okay, cool. And so, he was like, "When well, my schedule clear, that just told me, oh, he just friends on me and just dissed me real quick. So, you felt like he, he, he shaded it a little bit. Because we were introduced almost intentionally by our friend. So, it was supposed to be a thing like, delicious, this is somebody who's nice. And at first, I was like, no, that's my brother. So, when I noticed he kept liking my pictures, I was like, I knew he gave me bedroom eyes a little bit. So when I hit him up and then, you know, it took him like really maybe two months and it was finally I was doing the dungeon 
which is a very with sexual Candy. Candy, show. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm like, um, he came. I'm like, well, did he really come? <laughs> ah, that show, more than likely, I, both. <laughs> so I got a question that's not even on this thing. Mm -hmm. So I like your energy. What is your sign? I'm a Capricorn. Oh, Lord. My brother's a Capricorn. Yeah, he's Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the yeah, end. Yeah, my brother's a Capricorn, yes. and he's very, with money. Go-getter. Yes. So that's the one thing that T, I'm having a problem with. I can date a rapper. I can date an athlete. I can date even an actor. But, but you dating, like a hood nigga. No. You don't. I don't, actually. I really prefer somebody who is an intellectual or someone who I can... Um, I've dated hood guys before. I'm from Detroit. You know what I'm saying? And you I'm fine as hell, girl. I so love you. That's what happens. You know, the people don't know ass and titties <laughs> and shit causes a hood nigga to just come out of the nowhere. Let me bag her. But no. <laughs> <laughs> but I want it. I want, I like what I like. And I like him. So um, the controversy between the two of us is that he's such a man of honor. And I'm such a woman of status on the other end that. I must be trying to take him for his fortune. I've created my own fortune. Yes. My first fortune started here. Yeah. Then with my children. Uh -huh. And then all the businesses that God has blessed me to be able to, you know, come into. Yes. And I take care of myself like you. I have a beautiful home. Yes. I have a beautiful life. I was able to bring my family here. I didn't ask a man for anything. The only man that I went to for help was God. And I'm It's all good. Mm. So that's the only the problem that we're running into is that people think that we're polar opposites and that I'm after his money. Oh. So, now, delicious, I'm going to say it again, and then, you fine as hell. <laughs> I love you. Are you self-conscious about your body? Absolutely. What? Because if I could do it all over again, and shout out to all the women who have decided to have surgery. I'm not against surgery. I'm against a surgery, the way and the place and the, 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 how other people do it. You got to make sure that you go and do your research on whoever's going to touch your body. Because when I tell you I have scarring, that is... The craziest thing. Why well, get this done and I'm not even comfortable showing up? Girl, listen. Mm -hmm. All the all the hood niggas that you done said that you done had a cross or done ran into whatever. <laughs> they like them scars. They lick them scars, baby. They like dogs. You know how dogs will lick a motherfucking yeah. a, a, a wound on you. But think about my job. I'm 41 and I'm working with the likes of girls who are turning 18 every day. And so to have my belly button so severely scarred to have the under um what do you call it undercarriage of your of my breast to be it looks like there's a, a wire for a bra that's how bad the scarring is here and also my tummy tuck i wish i never got my tattoos over i just like yo but i really so had a nice about it you're transparent about it, and you have a beautiful personality and a beautiful oh, spirit. You. That's what they say to people when they feel like they're ugly. No, you you honestly do, and I can Thank see you. a man just. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I found one who won't judge him and who won't have no problem. It's love, with it. love all on you for who you are. It's just oh my he god, he does. He really does. I mean, we are not even in a sexual situation yet, but everything. have you pinched it, girl? Have you squeezed? No, it? because if I squeeze it, I'm gonna hit it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna play with it. <laughs> I'm gonna lay with it. Oh my with god! It. Oh god, you're a girl after my own heart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I so love fun. this. So, <laughs> you have been romantically linked to several male celebrities. Again. Okay. What is the truth? What is not? Okay. If I've been linked, it's probably true. So, Dre. Uh huh. I'm naming the name Dre. <laughs> yes. You. You. Uh huh. Yeah. Did I, was, you, I was crazy about Drake. Did you enjoy? Drake, yes. You know why? Because Drake is very passionate. Like how you hear his music. They're like, how you going to be a, a rapper who's a singing nigga? Well, he, he's good at what he does and he's good at who he is. Is he good more at, at, at a chew or, or do? Both. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so bad. Don't feel bad. No, I don't because that's past tense. I just don't want to interrupt anything that he has going on right Girl, now. Listen, he a man. Girl, let me tell you something. Me and come and go. They do. They like the trash people outside. Yes, sir. When it's time to put the trash in the curb, somebody come pick it and up. And you know what? He and I are friends. 
Yeah. So we're cool. So it's like it is what it is. And I'm not saying anything bad. I'm complimenting him. When we were, you know, messing around. When you did what y'all did, you did what you did. Yes. You know? Yes. So, you know, so. Very nice guy. Very nice guy. Mm -hmm. Who Who I am still friends with. Who else? Who, 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 who has tried to court you Um, that you've really been like? "Mm -hmm." Is it okay if we didn't sleep together? Rick Ross. Because we didn't do anything sexually. But he's tried to court. He's no, we were friends. Yeah, we were courting. And he didn't. You didn't. You didn't. I him. didn't. I didn't get a chance to. All right, so you like heavy niggas too. <laughs> I like men that I like. You know what I'm saying? Heavy niggas got heavy Flavor pockets. Flavor so bad. <laughs> he's so heavy, funny. heavy. He's you so got so heavy, baby. <laughs> heavy niggas got like. No, you know what? And I've been, I've been in this business now for 13 years. So to have. I've dated at least seven famous people. And yeah. I don't think I that's mean, bad. I like it, to it, date. It's not bad because, one, mm-hmm. everybody lusted after you from television. Oh, so God. it's going to happen. That kind of shit is going to happen. Like, they lo- I used to do adult films. Mm-hmm. Did you shut the front door? That's why you look like that. Well, girl, it's, it's out of shape now, but I used to be. <laughs> that's why when I look at you, I'm like, God, I got to get back on my job. I used to do adult films. I got scars on my body too from the, from from bot surgery and shit like that. I used to be subconscious about it myself, but mm-hmm. I'm like, do you know how many? See, you can call out names. Yeah. I can't. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Tell me later. I can't, right? <laughs> but I can't. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, it's just this is part of this unspoken rule or whatever. And I'm with you. I I don't I don't drop names. These are names that have already been this been the public. Yeah, you know, it's public. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's an unspoken rule. Mm-hmm. But my thing is, so I so what you said to me, I re, I, re, I relate to that. Yeah. I, I feel that. Yes. And my thing is. Some would say that because you're so sexy and fine and men lust after you so much, oh, okay. they would use they would say bad terms like whore and slut yeah. and all. Because I get it all the time. That but I've been whore and slut. Gold digger. Gold digger. I am one to dig for gold. As you should. Because I'm never going to dig for dirt. And there's nothing wrong with that. When I say gold, it has a G-O-A-L. Meaning that if you're, because I'm taking care of my business. So there's nothing wrong with me wanting someone that has taken this taken care of me. Right. Yeah. First of all, this, my dear. <laughs> This is a business. Thank you. I don't give a fuck what nobody say. They can call it whatever they want to say. If you find a something, you got a million and one niggas lusting after you. You can't just let a dude come communicate with you about, oh, I love you. <laughs> Bitch, you can get a broke down nigga and pop out chicken talking about they love you <laughs> and get you. all that goodness. <laughs> Or you could get like listen, I would I, w- I would like to see you communicate with a joint. Mm-hmm. A Rick Ross. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh the guy you And then what's crazy is the people who are interested in you and when your fans know about it, they will feel the same honor or they will feel happy too that those people are approaching them. So don't make me feel bad for something that you would find appealing as well. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, they're like, well, she dra- dated Drake and Wiz and Rick Ross. Okay, would well, these be men that if they approached you, you would say, oh, this is a problem? Right, oh, So no. why is it a problem? I'm all of a sudden, well, something's wrong with me because... Well, it's what, you, what, what becomes wrong with you is they not shaped like you. Yeah. <laughs> they don't look like you. They don't got your name. I, I'm really coming to understand that the problem is not us. Not us. No. It be them. Yes, because I'd be happy for people. When you say, I've got a new man, I don't care who he is. If you got a smile on your face and you're doing good and he's doing good to you, I'm all for it. Yeah. yeah. But you ain't got, you hoes ain't getting great. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, Ted, you shocked the world when it was revealed that you could sing. Uh-oh. Now, I know that you've dibbled and dabbled in the past with music. Mm-hmm. Is that something you're still passionate about? And can you sing something to us right now? Oh, my gosh. Um, well, yes, I'm going to always be passionate about music. I grew up in the church, so music was always my first love. I had to sing in a choir. There was no op, you know, you know, option outside of that. And so I love it. You know what I'm saying? When I'm at home and I hear music, I'm singing to it. When I'm at church and I hear music, I'm singing to it. It's something that I've done forever. So I'm always have a passion. Now, will I be able to fully explore it in entertainment? Um... They start in this little cut-off thing where they cut people <laughs> off. Off at a certain age. Yeah, like, yo, you're going to have to do the oldies but goodies station. I don't know if you're going to fit this demographic. So we'll see. FNL did really good. It was a single that I put out last October. Give us a give us a, a piece of FNL. Well, FNL has a slow rhythm, 
So I don't know if you can get anything musically from it. It's sexual. Fuck around and fall in love. Fuck around and fall in love. If you get this one, what you gonna fuck around and fall in love? <laughs> and that's on iTunes and all the places where they where music is sell. Yes. It is. Fuck around and fall in love. Yes. Now, Thank you. you're from Detroit, yes. and you and there are a lot of people from Detroit, like Cash Doll, Cash Doll, Eminem. Yeah, but speaking of that, how are you do you, you know Cash Doll? Yes, Cash Doll has talked about it, so I don't feel uncomfortable talking about it. Cash Doll. Used to be a um in a uh stripper, yeah. Let's just say it. She used to be a dancer, and so the club that I hosted for four years, she used to come and dance at the club. And when I tell you, she was one of my favorites because. She had this thing, whenever you see her now on her gram and you see her hair is laid, you never really see her with bad hair days. Never. That's exactly how she came to work. She was not one to do a bunch of pole tricks or whatever. Men would simply come in to pay her for conversation and come and sit in the booth and talk to her because that girl took pride in her hair, her makeup, and her fashions. So I would love it when it was a week where she wasn't at my club. I used to be frustrated because I just like how she took it as a profession, very seriously. Like every time we see you, you beat to the God. Yes. So you you fit the thing of the bill of where it's like, yo, this is what I do for entertainment. Yes, this is my job. And so I take this very seriously. Yes. And so that's why I've always respected her as a dancer because she took it seriously. It wasn't like, oh, I got a bill to pay. I'm going to throw these this outfit on. Yeah. You ever see a, yeah, a lazy yeah. dancer? Yeah. And shout out to all the dancers. A lazy dancer and a lazy hoe. <laughs> Yeah, I've seen. I'm them. just saying, no, you you will see the ones where they take pride in it, and it makes it look more like a profession. Now I don't know what she did outside of that, but when she came to work, that girl always looked the part, and so we were always cool. And when she got into music or whatever, she she put the same passion, and she wasn't always afforded, you know, the opportunities in the beginning that she you know wanted or deserved because she was uh, connected to a contract. That she couldn't get out of, right? So she couldn't release her music, but you know she persevered. She's determined. Yes, the tenacity She's determined. is there, yes. and she felt like I've arrived before that contract was ever even created, let alone before it ended. She always carried herself as though she was equal to anybody else that was up there, and so you couldn't do anything but respect, respect that. it. Yeah, right. So shout out to her, and yeah. then she just dropped her project that charted, and so yeah. Yeah, she so represents we, Detroit. Well. I get it, you know, and, and hearing this about Cash Doll from somebody that's from Detroit and, and, yeah. and knows her, it makes me respect Cash Doll. Oh, yeah. She went through a whole lot, and she while she did it, she carried herself as though she wasn't going through it. And so that's motivating. You know, you can say what you want to say about her, but when you are able to carry yourself right now, they just release Harriet Tubman. And that's what she remind me of, because she's like, yo, I got a whole lot of shit on my back, but you'll never see it, because from the front, I got this. And a lot of us as women, we go yeah. through that. I know that you've gone through Oh, it. yes. I go through it all the time. Yes. I have to wear a smile when on the inside I'm really crying. Turn crying, yeah. Yeah. You so, know, I, I get it. it. I get it. I respect it. I have a newfound respect from Cash Talk. Yes. From you brought that here. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Now, Delicious, my last question for you, mm -hmm. Senorita. Okay. <laughs> what is in the cars for Delicious? Oh, yeah. Where do you see yourself in the next hell? <laughs> Two years. Two years. Okay. Um, happy and back on radio. Five okay. years. Five years, happy and still on radio. <laughs> <laughs> Ten years. Um, happy, retire, and either owning a flower shop or bakery. Flower shop or bakery? One years. of my favorite things are flowers. I love flowers. Diamonds are good. And, and everybody's like, diamonds are girl best friend. Diamonds are forever. They are. But I love, there's a certain sentiment about flowers. And you got to make sure you have the card included. I do not like when a man gives me flowers. It looks like he just went on the ground from the flower shop and giving it to me. I want a card on the inside, so it says something that's personal. But yeah, I like flowers because they're going to die, so that means you got to do it again. You give me a diamond, I may be stuck with you feel like you've done everything that you need to do. That's what happened in my marriage. He made me his wife and thought that was it, and he went out and was screwing hoes. But flowers, I like the consistency of it. I like when you go and get me different colors. I want you to give me different flowers. You know what I'm saying? It just feels so ladylike. So I want a flower shop, and I will make sure that everybody's bouquet and everybody's order goes out just as beautiful as I see flowers. I just always been into them. Well, I never would have expected that to be an answer. Yeah, I would love to retire holding her, like mm, holding my own in a flower shop. Yeah, that would be so all the things that I've just talked to you about, talked mm -hmm. with you about. Mm -hmm. What my closing thing 
with you is I've gathered that you're transparent. Yeah. <laughs> you have self-conscious and ups and downs just like everybody else. Absolutely. And the end for you is to be loved. Yeah. And to blossom. Mm -hmm. Like a flower. Like a flower. <laughs> yes. And to give that beauty again and, and again, again and again. I, I gathered this from communicating you. with you. I did this like, I like that. You just want to live on and yes. live on yes. and yes. give. Yeah. I love you too. I love you. I love you. <laughs> Yo, oh my you God, I love you. I love you so oh, much. I, I knew that I we was going to be good. I knew <laughs> we was going to be good when you yes. came. You know, because I love Tiffany. I love Tiffany so much. Yeah. I love her. Mm -hmm. Tiffany came. I have to say this before we leave. Okay. Tiffany came in at a moment mm -hmm. on this show. She didn't give me no hard time. Like, you didn't give me no hard. She didn't give me the diva, this and the other. She didn't give me any of that. And mm -hmm. she made such an impact here. Mm -hmm. She rocked it. I yeah, watched such it. an impact, such a change. She, she, I'll forever appreciate her, forever oh. love her for that, forever. That's forever, my girl. Mm -hmm. you and me? you, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I love you too. And I I'm, love you back. And I'm so glad that you guys. Our friends. Oh, absolutely. I'm so glad for absolutely. that. Absolutely. And I'm so glad that you came and did the show. Thank you. I'm coming back. Yes, you are. <laughs> yeah. I'm coming. I'm bringing flowers, girl. Yes, bring some flowers. <laughs> now I know, I know to give you flowers because I didn't know what to give you. Now uh, I know to give you flowers. Well, you gave me this platform with you, honey, and I enjoyed it. So. Girl, your platform bigger than mine, so I, I'm honored <laughs> that you're here. And listen, I'm glad I was able to get We about to go upstairs and warm this up because you need to oh, eat yeah, it hot. Oh, yeah, this food we gotta was eat so good. By the way, good. thank you so much. It's in and out. Uh, no. What is it? One <laughs> the one seafood. Oh, look. Let me tell you. This was so good. The one seafood. I'm telling you. I'm, she, she, delivers. Talking about going, she delivers. She's talking about going to warm it up. I was tearing this up cold. cold. Yeah. <laughs> we about to warm it up, put some butter and stuff on yes. it. Yes. Delicious. Thank you so much for being our guest here at the show. Thank we you We love you so me. much and you're always welcome back. Thank you. I love you back. Thank you. This has been Cracking the Cold Cases with T.S. Madison and our special guest, Delicia. I love you guys. See you. See you later. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Yo, that was so much fun. Yeah. You do this every time.